final video in my series about generative expression patches. In this video, I'll show you how to put together two more semi-generative patches, focusing again on dynamics, inflection, and articulation. The Matriarch wasn't really designed to be a generative instrument. Like all Moog instruments, pretty much since the creation of the Mini Moog, they seem to have placed a higher focus on ease of performance and integration of synths with traditional Western music. Bukla and other additive synths, and even the Eurorack modular synths of today, seem to have gone another way, with a focus more on exploration than traditional performance. But, as I think I've shown over the past few videos, the Matriarch is incredibly versatile and certainly capable of generative patching. And over the past few years, I've created tons of explorative patches, so the Matriarch is definitely not deficient in that area. But, if my sole musical purpose was to create generative music, the Matriarch would probably not be my first choice. But since I find myself experimenting with all kinds of different genres and styles, I think the Matriarch was the right choice for me. I've already covered all the theory and philosophy I wanted to talk about in the last few videos, so no need for a long extended intro. There is one thing I should talk about that deals directly with the topic of this video and the Moog Matriarch. The envelope generators on the Matriarch are not CV controllable. In other words, there's no CV control over attack, decay, sustain, or release. They did make this big fader pretty accessible for sustain, because I think Moog's focus with the Matriarch was more performance-based instrument. Anyway, this is probably my biggest complaint about the Matriarch and Moog semi-modular synths in general. There are ways to fake it. I've showed you how to do that in some of the other videos I've posted over the last few years. But, to get around it this time, I'm going to use some external modules for one of the patches. That, of course, is one of the best things about modular synthesis. If you don't have a tool you need, it's usually pretty easy to find one that will work and easy to implement it into your patch. Okay, there's an index and links to patch diagrams in the description. And here's a little sample of the patches we'll be working on this time. Okay, for this patch, I'm going to need more than two LFOs. So I'm going to use oscillators three and four as LFOs. I've done that in a few other videos and made two videos that go into a lot of detail about that. So if you're curious how that works, check those out. But that leaves us with only two VCOs as voices. But I want three. So I'm going to show you something I don't think I've done in any of the other videos yet. I'm going to use the sequencer as a VCO. So let's set that up first. Okay, we're going to need to make some changes to the global settings. First, we'll need to make sure the matrix sequencer clock is always on. So that's D-sharp 0, D-sharp 2, and C0. Now I'm going to take the clock output from the back of the matriarch and patch that into the noise input of the mixer. It's just barely at audio rate, so even if we crank up the volume and crank up the rate, it's not going to sound much like a VCO yet. So we're going to go back into global settings and raise the clock PPQN to its max. PPQN just stands for pulses per quarter note. Different devices use different PPQN values to sync their clocks. It's not intended to be used like this, but guess what? It works great. So now it's definitely at audio rate, and we can tune it with a rate knob if we want. So I'm just going to turn up an oscillator and um, tune it to that for now instead of using a tuner. 
I'm sure you can tell just by the sound of it, but clock signals are just pulse waves, so we've got a square oscillator now. Okay, I've got it tuned to an F. I'm just going to use this as a drone, so I'm not going to worry about trying to set up pitch tracking, but if I wanted to, I could simply patch the keyboard CV out into the right input of the sequencer. The rate input's not one volt per octave, so it doesn't track great, but it's good enough that you can get about an octave range. Okay, now let's set up oscillators 3 and 4 as LFOs, so all we need to do is offset the pitch with an attenuator. I'm going to use attenuator 2 this time, make sure it's fully counterclockwise. And now oscillators 3 and 4 are going to be LFOs, and I'm going to hard sync oscillator 4 to oscillator 3. I talk a lot about the hard sync in the VCOs as a gates video. I'm going to use these oscillators to modulate the VCA, so just patching them both into the VCA CV inputs. They're both set up as saw waves, so that's basically just an AD envelope. If I switch them over to triangle, we can get, well, another AD envelope, but one with a longer attack. A swell. Because these waves are both bipolar, we get these neat um, dead spots or silence between the waves when it's crossing into negative range, which is not doing anything for our VCA. Could use a half-wave rectifier to sort that out, and maybe I'll do that in another video. But I like the dead spots, so I'm sticking with them. And might as well add some delay, because we know that we're going to add delay eventually, because what's a matriarch patch without the delay? I guess we should talk more about that hard sync. So oscillator 4 is hard sync to oscillator 3, so that means it's going to output clock divisions of oscillator 3. Again, I talked about that in detail in that other video, so that's why it's hard sync, so we can get clock divisions. Okay, let's bring up our other oscillators. Both are set to uh, saw waves. There's oscillator 1, and um, sounds good. Bring up oscillator 2 as well. But I think I'm going to switch them over to pulse waves. Now I'm going to switch into four voice paraphony mode. If I only play two notes, it's not going to affect oscillators three or four. So I don't need to worry about going into global settings and doing any more monkeying. Oh, and I also forgot, I'm obviously in drone mode on the VCA. Okay, let's get some more color to this patch. So I'm going to use the uh, triangle LFO, patch that into a malt. I'm going to use this to uh, modulate the filter and stereo going to patch into the um, attenuators and into the VCF inputs. And I'll do the same thing with the other side. I'm going to set the attenuator to the mirror image of the other one. I like the sound of that. That sounds really good, actually. Okay, I need more LFOs. So what I'm going to do is just loop the envelope generators, turn them into um, unipolar LFOs, and I'll patch out of the envelope generator into the CV input for pulse width of our oscillators, and I'll do that with both of them. So remember, if you want to use your envelope generator as an LFO, you just patch the envelope out into the trigger input on the envelope. Then attack and release controls the rate of the LFO. Okay, this sounds pretty good. I think I'm just going to play around a little bit, maybe do a little bit of tweaking. Okay, it's almost a shame to go further with this patch because I think it sounds pretty great already, but we've got one more LFO, so we're going to use that. Oh, and I'm attenuating it with a Splix, um, and it's going to modulate oscillators 3 and 4, the rate. So I'll set this to a sine wave and slowly bring it in. Cool. I 
really liked it before, but now we're getting a little bit more variation, more generativeness or randomness, whatever you want to call it, by modulating our clocks. Now, we still have to control the pitch manually. It's not fully generative yet. Oh boy, that sounds nice. Okay, I've got another idea. I'm gonna use these uh, tip-top molt cables and patch out of the wave output of our oscillators with the um, attenuator into the right input of our um, mod bay. So now we're getting some cross modulation and some even more randomness going on. This is really saturated. If you don't like that, all you have to do is turn down the oscillators in the mixer, but I really like the saturated, distorted sound of this patch, but it's easy to fix. Okay, that boat does it for this patch. I'm just gonna play around a little bit and enjoy it before we go on to the next one. Alright, this is going to be my last patch in my Generative Expression series. I'll continue this series in the future with videos about generative harmony, timbre, and rhythm. In this patch I'm going to use some external modules to get around the fact that the matriarch does not have CV controllable envelopes. So I'll use IntelliGel Quadrax, a quad function envelope generator, IntelliGel's Quad VCA, and I'm also going to use this little mini stereo mixer by Dopefer. So I'll start by patching a single voice just to show you how our voices are going to be set up. This is out of the Matriarch Oscillator 1 wave out into the Quad VCA channel 1. Out of the VCA, we're going to go into channel 1 of our stereo mixer. The Matriarch's mixer, as you know, is not stereo, but the uh, filter is. So by bypassing the uh, Matriarch's mixer and using this little guy, I'll be able to have control over the placement of the oscillators in the stereo field. So now I'll just patch out of the mixer, not into the mixer, into the VCF1 and VCF2, which are going to be left and right filter inputs. And I've got the filter in stereo mode. I'm going to switch the VCA to drone mode, 
and we won't hear anything until we turn up our external VCA and mixer. All right, so far so good. Now let's set up our envelope generators. I'm going to use a tip-top malt because I'm going to show you this on the scope. Patching out of Quadrax channel 1 to the CV input for our scope and turn down the VCA, make sure it's all the way off. A VCA level control like this or an offset for the VCA would be something that would be really killer to have on the Matriarch. It would be excellent for drones and a bunch of things. Okay, got the scope patched up. Let's take a look at this envelope generator. The Quadrax is a pretty fancy function generator. There's a whole bunch of options. But we're going to use it pretty much just the same as the looping envelope generators on the Matriarch. So it's going to be an AR envelope generator. To loop this, you just push this button on the right. So this is just the same as patching end of envelope into trigger input on the Matriarch. So if you take a look on the scope, you can see with both rise and attack at the midway point, we get a unipolar triangle LFO. We got the scope set up, so we might as well explore some shapes. If we turn the attack to zero, we can get a saw. And if we crank it up, we can get a ramp. Just like any looping envelope, the longer the attack or release, the slower the rate of the LFO. Let's go back to our just mid-speed triangle LFO for now. The whole point of using these external envelope generators is that we can modulate the attack and release, so let's set that up. So, molting the wave out of the mod bay LFO. And I'll patch out of the malt into the CVA input on the Quadrax. The Quadrax only has four CV inputs, A, B, C, and D. So you might think it's limited, but the CV matrix on the Quadrax is very complex. It contains attenuators, inverters, and a real versatile routing system. So I'm going to start by modulating the rise of our envelope with the uh, sine wave from the matrix you see on the scope below. So you can see by modulating the rise of our envelope generator, we're not only modulating the attack, whether it's a sharp attack or a long swell, but also the length of the note. Pretty cool. So in musical terms, we're getting accents and crescendos. And I'm going to malt this triangle LFO, and you guessed it, I'm going to patch it into CVB input on our quadrax. And let's use this one to modulate the fall of our envelope. When you first get a Quadrax, the CV routing is a little bit complicated, but once you get used to it, it's pretty easy. It's just basically pushing a button and assigning it to where you want to go. So CVB to fall. And that made a big difference. Just adjust the rates of our LFOs and try to find something that we like. But this is always going to be fairly random because we're using two totally separate LFOs at different rates. And they're also different wave shapes. So we're going to get some pretty unexpected but hopefully cool sounding results from uh, this modulation. Let's just listen for a bit. Okay, let's set up our other three voices using the exact same routing I did for the first one. So oscillator 2, 3, and 4 to quad VCA in and out to the mixer. We'll set up the panning and other things in a second. And I'm going to patch out of the uh, Quadrax, the envelope generator, into the CV inputs for all four of the channels on the VCA. Set up all the shapes for the envelopes and set them to cycle. Just patching that last oscillator in there. Now I'm going to loop the envelope generators on the matriarch and I'm going to use them as LFOs and patch them into Quadrax CV inputs C and D. Okay, so let's bring in the oscillators on our external mixer. This mixer has really high output. Yeah, so you can see I'm overdriving the filter on the matriarch. Oh, we've got to tune those oscillators. Yikes. Okay, let's get these in tune. What was I doing with that last patch? Oh, they were LFOs, that's why. Okay, I'm going to set them all to uh, pulse waves. And let's get rid of some of that saturation and bring down the mixer. And let's set up our stereo field. 
Setting the panning of individual oscillators is obviously something you can't do on the matriarch without something like this, an external mixer. Okay, now we've got to set up our CV matrix on the quadrax. Not going to go into the workings of the quadrax in this video. All you need to know is that I'm modulating each envelope with different levels, inversions, and combinations of the LFOs from the matriarch. So let's see what we've got. Nice, that's really neat. Oscillators, or uh, envelopes one and two at least, seem to be moving a little bit faster than three and four. Might be something I monkey around with later, but for now I'm going to leave it the way it is. Pretty good start. Okay, let's add in some delay. Delay and reverb are pretty much essential for patches like this. Okay, that sounds good. And I'm going to lower the cutoff just to get a little darker sound. We'll be modulating the filter in a moment. And I'm going to play around with the panning of the oscillators a little bit. I think it went too dark. So this patch is kind of interesting in the sense that it's not polyphonic, but it's not paraphonic either. Each voice has its own independent VCA, but all voices are sharing the stereo filter. So polyparaphonic patch? I don't know. But whatever we call it, I think it's time to set up some filter modulation. So I'm going to use a um, tip-top molt cable patch out of the filter envelope generator into VCF1 cutoff. And I'm going to grab another one of those cables and do the same thing with the amp envelope generator and use it to modulate the uh, filter too. I could use any of the LFOs from the matriarch or the quadrax to modulate the filter. We'll just start with these ones, see how they sound. As we know, the LFOs from the filter envelope generators are unipolar, so we're not going to get any negative modulation. So we just have to pick a point on the filter, which will be our lowest cutoff. Still getting a tiny bit of filter saturation, but that's okay, I like it. It's actually a big part of the matriarch sound. But uh, let's just have a listen and decide what should be our next steps. Okay, I think reverb should be our next step. Normally I like to add reverb last, but I think its presence or absence may influence my next patching decisions. So I'm going to use my Intelligel Spring Rays. I think some stereo spring reverb will sound great with what we've got. Alright, although I said I plan to save timbre changes for the next series, those boring square waves are bothering me, so I'm going to modulate the pulse width of oscillator 1, and to do that I'll patch out of the malt, which is our sine LFO, and attenuate it with a splix. Now here's another thing that needs clearing up. The pitch inputs on the oscillators are normal, but the pulse width modulation is not, as you can hear, so just modulating one oscillator is not doing much, so let's set up some more pulse width modulation. So out of the mold into an attenuator, using the attenuator to invert the wave, and I'll go out of that attenuator into the pulse width of oscillator 2. Wait, but if I do that, I've used up that entire mold. So first I'm going to mold the mold to this other mold. So I've got even more copies of my sine LFO, which I'll need to modulate the other oscillators. I don't need this cable anymore. Okay, so out of the molt into, I'll use the top attenuator this time, and I'll use the attenuator to invert it, but I'm going to use different levels of attenuation and inversion for each oscillator's pulse width. Oh, 
Just modulating the first two oscillators is already making a big difference. And just realizing I might need these attenuverters for something else in the patch. I've got a bunch more of those little Splix passive attenuators, but they don't invert. So I want to save my um, matriarch attenuators just in case I want to invert something. So instead I'm going to use a tip-top malt cable. And I'm going to use one of the uh, envelopes from the Quadrax to modulate uh, the pulse width of oscillator 3. Just patch that back in so it's still modulating the VCA. And I'll grab another Splix to attenuate this and patch into the pulse width of oscillator 3. And I'm going to do the exact same thing with oscillator 4 out of Quadrax's envelope 4. So now all four oscillators have independent volume uh, modulation as well as pulse width modulation. Okay, let's just tinker a little bit before we go on to the next steps. I want to make these envelopes a little bit longer to smooth out some of the volume and uh, modulation changes. We're getting there. Okay, I have another idea, but we're going to need all three attenuators on the matriarch to do it. I knew this was going to happen. So anyway, I'm going to replace the pulse width modulation on oscillator 2 with the triangle wave so I can get my attenuator back. So I don't need this malt to the malt anymore. And I'll unplug that attenuator for now. Okay, how do I do this? So I'm going to take the, um, this is the going to the quadrax. I'm going to put that into the malt and put the triangle wave into the malt. So now my triangle wave is still modulating the quadrax. And I'm going to go out of the malt and I'll grab another passive attenuator. And I'm going to use the triangle wave to modulate the pulse width of oscillator 2. So we've still got all our oscillators with modulating pulse width. But now I've got my attenuverter free again. So the mixer on the matriarch is totally bypassed and free for other uses at the moment. So I'm going to use it as a CV mixer and modulate the VCAs on the matriarch. So the first thing I need to do is set up a DC offset, which will act like the volume control on the VCA, just like the one on the Intelligel Quad VCA I talked about earlier in the video. So patching out of this attenuator into channel 4 on the mixer. I'm just picking channel 4 at random. It could be any of the inputs, except the noise input, which is inverted, by the way. And out of the mixer, we'll go into VCA CV control for channel 1. And boom, our sound is gone. Like almost everything on the matriarch that's in stereo, the VCAs are normaled left to right. So we only need to patch into VCA1 to modulate both. If you want independent patching, you have to patch into both of them independently. My attenuator is turned up fully clockwise, so we're getting an 8 volt DC offset from our attenuator. If you just want a volume control over your VCAs, you don't need to use the mixer, but I intend to mix CV signals, so that's why we're using the mixer. So if we turn up channel 4, we're going to be adding our DC offset or opening up our VCA. The whole point of doing this is so that we can modulate our VCA with something else, but keep the VCA open so the second modulation source doesn't completely close the VCA. So let's set up our second modulation source, and I've got a great idea. We're going to use the sequencer clock output. It's still at audio rate from the patch we did earlier in the video. If you skip that part, you might want to go back and see how we set that up. 
I'll just patch it into channel one. Bring up the volume of channel one. And then the rate of our arpeggiator, which isn't doing anything at the moment. And there's our AM modulation. Cool. I'll just use the mixer to dial in a balance between our offset and our amplitude modulation. And this is just going to be a static oscillator. So try to get it somewhat in tune and find a nice AM sound. That sounds good. And again, get a balance, maybe back off the AM and turn up our offset. Oh, that's easier to hear. Okay, let's bring that delay back in. And instead of the spring reverb, I think I'm going to try a lexicon reverb. I want something a little bit more lush in the top register. And I guess we'll take a little musical break while I tweak and play a little bit and explore this patch before we try anything else. it a little bit and I think what we need to do is add some independent filter modulation or at least attenuate some of that filter modulation so I'm going to patch out of the envelope generators into these last two attenuators that I saved for us oops a bit tangled and out of the attenuators into the um, CV controls for the filter cutoffs do that with attenuator one and two and just going to attenuate the filter modulation a little bit. I thought it was a little over the top before. And let's add a little bit of resonance, clean up the low end a bit. some randomness to the voicings or slight randomness to the voicings by changing the octaves of the oscillators so depending on the order of keys I press we'll get different octaves And there's 
nothing patched into input two or three of the mixer, so we could use oscillators two or three to uh, modulate the VCA as well. And these ones won't be static, they're gonna change with each key press. Not getting much from three, so let's try two. And gonna bring in that static AM modulation again. I liked it the best. Just monkey around and try to find some new sounds I like. So after I moved the filter modulation of the attenuators, my next idea was going to be to modulate those attenuators. So in other words, modulate the amount of modulation going to the filter. But there's already so much going on that I don't think it needs it. But if you wanted to try it out, all you'd have to do is patch, well, anything into the CV control for those attenuators. I think the first thing I'd try would probably be keyboard CV out from the back of the matriarch. But aftertouch might be cool or even any of the many LFOs we've got in this patch. This is definitely a sit and listen type patch too. So I don't actually need the hold button because everything's in drone, but I guess habits die hard. Let's listen for a bit. Okay, this patch is fun to play. I hope if you put it together, you have as much fun as I've had experimenting with this one. So this concludes my series on generative expression patches. Although we have touched a little bit on timbre, rhythm, and harmony in this series, I'll go into more detail about those things in the next group of videos. It took a while to put this patch together, as you know, so I think I'm going to play it for a while longer and I'll keep the camera going, so feel free to keep listening if you're enjoying the patch. Thanks for watching. Hope you find this helpful.